Hey everyone, so I am in Carmel, Indiana with someone that if you're a newer player, you might not know, but if you were around in the 80s, you would very much 90s. have known. Did I say in the 80s? In the 90s. Sorry, I get my, at my age, I get my decades confused. <laughs> I, was, I was born in the 60s. It's so hard to say out loud. Uh, but this is Mike Randolph, uh, national pairs champion, second place at PDJ World Championships in 1995. 1995, uh, he was also one of the very first players to tour. Uh, within the first 10, uh, he tired, toured in a... 1979 Chrysler Newport. That, we were living large back then. If we had our own vehicles back in the 90s as professional disc golfers, that was balling for the day. Uh, but he traveled around the country and uh, he didn't want to collect discs with autographs on them. So he just had everybody autograph his car. That's true, yep. I traveled around with RJ Jerez and Harold Hampton yeah. in my Chrysler Newport. And uh, at the women's tournament, women's nationals in Iowa, uh, I had somebody pull oh, out cool. their giant box of Sharpies and had people start signing the car. That way I didn't have to have a different disc from every week to try and keep track of signatures. They just all signed the car. Now that's, that's brilliant. And... Uh, you also toured with one of the very first women to tour. I think there was Nina Novell was the first. I think Sue from Michigan, remember Sue? Sue, yeah. Uh, and then uh, was- I think Lisa traveled before. In 96, I played with Lisa Denzer and we traveled around the country, yeah. And she won the rookie of the year and the points that year. Yeah, so she had a pretty good year. She's part of, part of our sports history. Yeah, you won a bunch of events. I had the, I was the rookie of the year in '92, and then Lisa was the rookie of the year in '96. Two F two Michigan golfers out there making mm. a splash. Yeah, and uh, you're also known at the time. A lot of people said so. Mike's one of the you know. Here's the trivia question: the list of players that finished second to climb on the '90s. Mm, uh, Mike is that. one of them. But Mike also, uh, for a while, was probably recognized as having the best final nine in the mm. history of disc golf by many people. That was fun. You finished second place to Ken, but had a final nine in Port Arthur. What yeah, was that? that was fun. What was that all about? Uh, I missed one hole. I uh, had uh, six birdies and uh, one par and two eagles. That was nice. <laughs> that, that was good. So, yeah, so what, 10 under for... <laughs> but still lost by four, so... 10 under for nine holes. But you started off like down by like, what, 12? No, nah, yeah, I went from nine back to four, so I'm going by five. That round, <laughs> you made five strokes on Ken Climbo in the final line. He was line. quite good. He was quite good. Yeah. Uh, and... I, I finished in the top five at Worlds seven different times. Did you really? That was the first one in 95. And seven second. times top five? Yep. Holy cow. I, I Last even... one was 08. And then... Uh, Okay. Then had the kids in 2010 and just kind of got out of competitive disc golf at that point. So. <laughs> no, that, that I, that's when I stopped. Came out today, got my butt handed to me by pretty much everybody. <laughs> but it was good to get out and see you on the course again. It was, it was, thanks for coming to Indiana. No, for sure, absolutely. I think the, 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 so the community liked having you here, liked having your clinics. Yeah, it, it was fun it to was, see you out there throwing today. It, it was fun. So we met at 92 Worlds. In, in, Pro in, Worlds, in yeah. Detroit, Michigan, and Mike was, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote my book because I wrote about this in my book when I when I first met Mike, he was just the, the chubby kid mm -hmm. in Michigan who was on my card, who was also I mean rookie Still of the year the that chubby no rookie of the year that year, uh, so it's not like That's you weren't true. weren't like really really good, but I met you, didn't think Still anything of it, and then I moved to Fort Collins, and you were already there. How did you wind up in Fort Collins? Uh, after that year, that Worlds in 92, I moved out there. I was done with high school, and I moved out to live with my uncle, who had moved out there in the 60s. So just to Colorado coincidence? State. Just, uh, it was a great town to be in. I wanted to get out of Michigan. I was done with high school, and I ended up going to college out there in Fort Collins. Uh, it was a lot of fun town. Uh, when I moved there in 92, uh, New Belgium was just getting going. There was already five brew pubs in town. The Right Life was there running disc leagues and ultimate leagues. It was a good spot to be. 
And then you came in 94 and Daryl Nodlin was there at the time. Yeah, there was we had this duster there. I think at one point we figured we had five guys in Fort Collins that could throw over 500 feet. Back in the back 90s in the with like Cyclone era. Yeah, yeah, with Cyclones yeah. and Exclones. No, there was a time when three of the top 10 players in the world, Daryl, you and me, yeah. all lived in Fort Collins and it's Fort Collins is this little island like it's you had to drive like 700 miles to the next town where they really played disc golf. Well, which was there Kansas was Denver, City. but yeah. Well, no, Kansas, I mean, we're, KC like, Wide Open was eight hours wait a away. Second. No, no, no. New Mexico. D D disc golf wasn't even happening in Denver then. There wasn't much. That's no, true. remember Ronnie? Ronnie and was I. Previous to the Mile Ronnie, High what's club. his name? Built the club, uh, the first course down there. Right. Ronnie there was Ross. Arvada, and that was it. Johnny Ross. Yeah. Well, I mean, Johnny Roberts was big down there. Yeah. They, you're right. They didn't have no. the. You had to go to the Mile High Disc Golf Club really <laughs> brought things together, but that was in the early 2000s. You had to I'd go to say. Colorado Springs, <laughs> or at the Klingon Smiths, or and TJ Lawrence, yeah, yep, and then Chauncey Donaldson came out of he is our a kid. Yeah. But then, but then you had to drive to Kansas City. Anyways, we were in the middle of nowhere out there, but we played together every day, and like we, like what is it? Iron sharpens iron. Is that the expression? There was some good battles with you, me, and Daryl just out on rounds. Yeah, and that was. Uh, that's like fun. we pushed each other and we, we, we and were then always... of us started messing up their plastic and this craft started making the cyclone and the exclone and the magnet and yeah and you and i decided to start playing for jim in 95. yeah i i and again i wrote about this in my tour. book yeah that that uh <coughs> when i moved to this craft was i was on hole one at the grateful discourse on colorado state university campus and by the way, full credit to Innova for how good the Viper was, because when the when the X clone came out, the way it was described to me by Mike was, "Dude, this craft has a Viper." Right? I mean, that so, it's the, a little so, bit no, uh, yeah, for sure. Viper's a little bit bigger, but yeah. it was this. It was it was an overstable disc at a time when there were very few overstable discs. The culture of the sport was still. Those under were stable high re revolutionary at the time the cyclone and the x-clone yeah. definitely made a huge difference and so when the, when the x have many other discs since then but that was yeah. big that was big at the time that's I, for sure. I, yeah i threw that disc on hole one i had a bag full of uh, other companies discs and i threw the x-clone on hole one on the campus course and i immediately got back in my Five, car i didn't play hole two got back in my car drove home because that's what you did back then. <laughs> I grabbed my phone, to use the phone off the wall, <laughs> didn't walk too far because of the cord connecting dialed to the phone. I dialed Jim Kenner up at Discraft and I said, I want to start throwing Discraft uh, after that disc. Yep. And then so, we played national doubles that year with the, as our first team Discraft venture. Yes, we won national, national doubles. doubles. Yeah, that was we fun. won nationals that year. We came back and from the second the card. These were nice. I remember the uh, the moment too. You, do, I think you, maybe I hope you remember this. Remember. But we're on this. Okay, we're on the second card, and of course, you know Ken. Ken's always if he if he's not winning a tournament, he was within a stroke. I mean, Kenny never had a bad round in his life. It was so uh, frustrating. They were defending champs. They were defending champs, and so uh, no, I uh, no, did I, you and Brad no, won it the year before. No, no, I, I won with Valencia the year before. When did you win Brad? The year, the oh, year after. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. That's but right. so we're on hole two. We finished, that could and we be one of your many partners. Yes, but we knew what they had, what they, what they had scored, and we're walking up back to Tournament Central, and Ken makes a putt on the final hole, and he does this, and you look over at me and you go, "Put your arms down, Ken," because because uh, you remember that? Because you because you knew the score. Yeah, I remember when they when they realized, and I just remember them kind of pointing our way and his head turning down, but. That was a good battle. We were a pretty tough team out there. That's for sure. It was with really those, those discs. I think we were the only team where both players could throw 500 feet with yeah. these old-fashioned discs on a 9,000-foot course. <laughs> kind of came in handy. That was fun. So you that was a fun year. I, I didn't know that you finished top five for five and years. I saw you throw a grateful disc that year, right before I left on tour. That was the last event before I headed out on the road. It was grateful disc in Fort Collins. And in the final line there, I saw you throw a 560-foot oh, shot in my over book. the top of the dorms. I had never seen it. I, I mean, didn't even fathom that it would be possible. I threw this giant S shot over the dorms, flexed out, up on the far side, across the volleyball pits, and then banged like a 45-foot putt or so <coughs> to take a birdie on a 
hole that anybody else would have been happy to three. <coughs> that was yeah. one of the most amazing shots I've ever seen. I, I wrote about that. But I did beat you. But he did out. win. That was last. <laughs> well, I didn't want. I didn't want you to out lose. On the road. I, you were going out on tour. I, I didn't want you to lose confidence. To send me out off a good Yeah, play. that's what I friends really do. That. Yeah, what a that's buddy. that's how we rolled in the, in the 303. <laughs> no, it was it was great, and you went on tour. I, I and yeah, so fun. you finished. Did you finish second again, or just top? No, second, two thirds, two fourths, two fifths. Never won. Never. Always a bridesmaid. No, I know. Yeah, same here. Welcome to the Bridesmaids Club. I, I keep thinking I'm going to come back in Masters and do something. And now all these guys are already turned Masters age yeah, and have been playing. And I have all 10, 30 so. Masters players. <laughs> There's the, always, yeah, it doesn't matter. We'll see. Maybe Grandmasters. I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> get them. You already get almost there? first year. I don't know. Get them there. Yeah? Get them there. No, so it's cool, man. It's so great to see you. It's, uh, this yeah, is, I'm like, I love out. touring and getting to see all my... All my old friends, if you if you read my book, you're gonna read about, this is the Mike Randolph in the book. I read about him a lot. I think you got your own chapter, actually. No, actually, you did get your own chapter. The family is big. Yeah. The family keeps getting bigger. But you are, no, but like in, in my- It's good to see so many people in the sport. Yeah. In my career, though, I have some very, some people that are very important to me that for various reasons. They were my closest friends like you. They, bat I battled with them like you. You were both someone I battled with and was a close friend and trained with. So that you, yeah, that's fun. you were a huge part of my life. So Welcome. it's great to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you so much. All right, let's go. Well, you're gonna go that way. I'm gonna go this way. But let's. It's air. We're gonna air shake. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, COVID. Oh, I should have my mask. Yeah. On, Right. No, we're we're outdoors and we're about to <coughs> we get shots. Yep, that's coffee. And I've coffee. I've uh, I'm always upwind. I just kind of always wind up there and, and I pretend that it's like it's random. Important it's to not random. That. I'm upwind. Throw your approach shots upwind, kids. Throw your approach shots upwind from the group during COVID. And cool, man. Basket. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.